Hi guys, have you ever wondered why some S-Log ISOs produce higher noise than some certain ISO? What's up guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Alexandria Udekia. I'm a filmmaker based here in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm a wedding filmmaker <laughs> based here in Lagos, Nigeria. So basically today, um, I will share with you dual ISO on the Sony camera on S-Log 2 or S-Log 3. And if there's actually any need for you to actually shoot on the S-Log, I'll tell you why so i'm talking from the perspective of a wedding filmmaker in nigeria before we go on so if you know you don't want to watch this video from to the end you don't want to stress yourself so i'm not going to tell you what you should expect the two native iso of my own i don't know if there's a difference in every other um, sony cameras but my own sony camera the sony a73 is a base iso iso 800 and also iso 4000 those are the two base ISO that you can get the best ISO or less ISO noise in your footages. So if you don't watch these footages through this tutorial, that's the summary of the entire tutorial for today. But if you still want to know more on how I discovered this, you can actually stay behind and watch through these footages. Alright, so basically I've been using my Sony A73 for the past few months. Um, I moved from the Sony A63, sorry, Sony A64 to Sony A73, and I was shooting on the S-Log2 and also on the X-Log3. Now, I know a lot of people tend to shoot S-Log you know, to get the best dynamic range and the likes, but the truth is, whenever you start shooting on S-Log, you need more light. That's just the truth. Uh, for, for me, I shoot weddings. So, during the portrait session, I shoot on S-Log so, so that I can get the best dynamic range. But I've discovered that the S-Log footages, when I just got my A73, produced a lot of noise because I didn't actually understand um, how the ISO and the dual ISO um, thing works together. And after my research, I discovered that there are some certain ISO that produces more noise than the other. I know for someone like me that actually started with Canon, coming from Canon, the belief has always been um, the higher your ISO, the higher the noise in your footages especially for videography but i think when it comes to sony there's a little bit of twist uh for sony for x log 2 and x log 3 your base iso is actually iso 800 you can go below that that's your base iso how did that carry out my test how did that come about the fact that those two are the base iso i shot at f on x log 2 so from iso 800 to iso 64000 <laughs> So in here, um, as you can see on my, uh, let me go to my assembly. So I've, na I've named everything ISO 800, ISO 1000, ISO 1050, up to ISO 10,000. Oh, I actually went above 6400. So ISO 10,000. So we're going to be reviewing each one of them um zoomed in at eyes zoomed in at um let's say 75 percent so you can see the um noise properly so let's go straight to iso 800 so we're gonna play iso 800 first So you can see there's noise in the ISO 800 though, but it is you no know, limited. There are like regular grains that you can overlook. You know this ISO 800. So once we go to ISO 1000, you can see the grains that now they are having like good grains and color frame and like kind of red dots. If you look closer at this side, where there's so it's not that much, but you can see there's a difference between 800 and 1000 that's a slight difference but there's a difference everything go straight to the out at the next one i is 1015 you see the same thing is happening here so the way i actually carried out this um iso test was to um put my lens on my camera and cover the lens so it is just filming black so and i keep kept on increasing um the iso so let's go from iso 1250 to iso 
1600. Can you see? Now there's more noise being introduced. Just pay attention to this you noise. Know, especially this uh, right hand, we are moving this cursor. So we go to ISO 2000. The noise is now very uh, obvious. You can see a lot of noise. You know, even zoom in. Let's zoom in to 100%. You can see the noise level. I hope you guys can see it you know, on YouTube. I hope you can see it. You can see the noise here. Yeah. So I said over 500. The noise is much now. You know, you can see. Uh, I saw 3,200. Wow, this. And then you can see the red the noise. Now pay attention to this noise. This red spot you can see all over. Now I'm moving to the next ISO base, next native ISO. You now I told you ISO 800 and ISO 4000 are the two base ISO. So let me take you guys straight now. From 3200, let's go to ISO 4000. Can you see how clean it is? Can you see how clean it is? Let me go to ISO 3200. Can you see the noise? Can you see ISO 4000 here? Can you see how clean it is? Let me not compare this ISO 4000 and ISO 800. Look at the ISO 800. Look at ISO 4000. No difference at all. <laughs> it's so funny. When I discovered it, I was I, I never knew. You know, I was always like, oh, ISO 800 is too small for me. Let me just look at ISO. Maybe ISO 1000 or ISO 1000 But you get the best out of the ISO. No, less noise from ISO 800 and ISO 4000. Those are the two native ISOs of um, the Sony A73. Now that doesn't mean you can use other ISO. If you can deal with the noise, fine. And I heard there are special softwares that actually clean up those noise. But I think if you have the room to avoid it, it's always good you avoid from camera because no matter how professional the camera, the software you're using to do it, the, 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 there's always side effects. Do you understand? So let's move on to ISO 5000 you know back to noise again so as a 5000 is like very similar to 1000 so you can see 5000 1000 and see the noise pattern i hope i'll be able to like verify how i was able to do this so this is my eyes please zoom in at 100 so let's go back to the video so i hope you find this tutorial so the summary of it is that if you're shooting in an environment where you can control the light all right or you are shooting a project that requires post-production like color grading i think you should shoot s log all right try and shoot s log because you're in control of things but if you're shooting like for me i'm talking from like i said i'm shooting from i'm a wedding filmmaker if you're shooting a project that requires multiple crowd like events i don't see any reason for you to shoot s log you can shoot if you can go through the whole stress of color grading and the likes if not just I'd rather you just explore the Cine, the Cine 4, Cine 3, Cine 4 or the uh, HLG color profile and see which one is better because those ones are less cumbersome in color grading but the S-Log for events like um, um, wedding party, all those stuff you have a lot of problems but for portrait session or you're shooting a pre-wedding that requires just the couple alone you know you have two people and probably the environment which are the elements yeah you can shoot s log but in a situation where it's an event i don't think you should s log because i mean the stress doesn't really work it so just shoot maybe hlg hlg3 or uh cine4 or yeah cine4 those two just Try, I'll be dropping tutorials. If you want me to do tutorials on that, you can let me know. I can explain to you which is better for which, which I use. So that will be on another tutorial. But for me, if you're shooting S log, you have to be in charge of the lights because if you do not have enough lights, you have problem with S log. Now, in a situation whereby um, you you move from the base ISO to the second base ISO, which is ISO 4000, and the light you no know, is too much. I mean, ISO 4000 is a lot. And the light coming into your lens is too much and you don't want to um, um, compromise on your 180 degree rule your 180 degree rule is the um, your doubling your frame rate to be your shutter speed um, and also your aperture is totally a fixed one probably you don't want to go higher you want to still retain that depth of field you need to actually need to just get an ND filter an ND filter will solve that problem of too much light coming in at ISO 4000 so if you want me to do a tutorial on 
how I use my apart my um, ND filter. You don't just have to get the most expensive ND filter. The cheaper ND filter, although there will be a compromise in the color, so there will shift a little bit of shift in color, but you can actually work. Um, you can actually work around it. Um, but just know that there's a shift in, in color. So. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate you guys for subscribing, like, comment, and share this video. And um, yeah, more tutorials to come. And I see you some other time. Peace.